This is The Real Hustle on Holiday. In this series, Alex, Jess and Paul expose to our hidden cameras the scams that cheat tourists and travellers out of their hard-earned holiday money. On tonight's show, Paul rings up a nice little profit. How much do you want? Oh, hello. Lisa Mafia's got 21 seconds to lose a tenner. Catch, because I know I can do that. And Jess makes these tourists feel right at home. You've only been here two minutes. You're caught off guard, aren't you? All the people on this show have been hustled for real, and after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. The sun is setting over the historic city of Malaga on the south coast of Spain. After spending hours lazing on the beach, holidaymakers head into the center to finish off a perfect day. And here to ruin it is Paul. He's set up a kiosk selling snacks and drinks to tourists. But he's hoping his latest product will turn out to be a bestseller. This is the phone home hustle. Calling Britain from abroad can be expensive, but not if you use the phone card Paul's selling, which promises an incredible rate of just two cents per minute. Hola. Hola. Speak English. Yep. Uh, do you sell international phone cards? Yep, these are the best ones. Two cents a minute now, I think. With such a great price, this customer decides to borrow some extra cash from his mate. How many? Uh, four. The mark is making the most of the great offer and buys several cards in one go. Four. There you go. Thank you very much. Enjoy. It's a good start to Paul's evening. And it's not long before some more customers pay a visit to his kiosk. Hola. Do you speak English? Like a native. OK. <laughs> and can we have one of these euro low call? Sure. Please. Uh, five euros. I don't have any chance, do OK. Go. Don't be ripped off by your mobile network. Phone the UK 8 to 10 cheaper This girl knows a good deal when she sees one. Enjoy. Perfect. Thank Great. you. Take care. The mark immediately puts her new phone card to good use with a call back to the UK. Hola. How much do you want? Oh, hello. Can I have a euro card, please? Sure. Yeah. Five euros. Right here. Thank you. Paul sold six cards in the space of a couple of hours and is feeling pretty pleased with himself. But if he's only selling them for five euros each, how is he making a profit? The previous customer returns, not looking too happy with her purchase. Excuse me. I just bought this like two minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And I just called England and it only gave me like three minutes. That's not right. Wait. The only thing I can tell you to do is to call one of these numbers. There's no chance of a refund, I mean, two and a half I, minutes. I can't time. refund you, but what to do is if you give them your number, what they should do tomorrow is they'll credit you with the original amount of money, but they usually give you a bonus credit as well. And they'll do that, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I'm sure you're telling me the truth. Obviously. But you might have been talking <laughs> since you left here. I you might be gone. trying to con me. I haven't been gone 250 minutes. So no, that's true, yeah, you I should have had plenty. I can't possibly lose it all. Trust me, I've seen every con in the book. But if you call them, they should be able to help you, OK? <laughs> all right, thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. So they've been ripped off, but they don't know the half of it. Here's how a phone card works. You dial a free phone number on the card. Then you type in the UK number you want to phone. And the company connects your call straight through at the cheap rate. You just buy however many minutes of connection time you want on a scratch card. 
But the hustler's free phone number isn't as free as the marks think. In fact, it's a premium rate line, which adds several pounds per minute to a mobile phone bill. And because the number belongs to the hustlers, that money goes straight into their pockets. It said two cents a minute. I called my gran. I got two and a half minutes, <laughs> took it back, and he won't give me my money back. Apparently, if I call tomorrow, I might get my money back, but might not. Calling the helpline number on the card definitely won't get her money back. In fact, it's another premium rate line. In that case, what can you do? <laughs> Go back in, kick his head in, I don't know. Always make sure you know exactly what deal you're getting from a phone card. If you're unsure about which one to buy, then ask around. Ask fellow travellers, ask local people, see which ones they use, and then you can make your decision from there. Because the moment you walk away from the shop, then you can't go back. How are you? Nice to see, see you. you. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. You might as well say goodbye now. And money won from a celebrity is even sweeter. <laughs> I am on the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Let's see if you can do it. Oh. In the Celebrity Kong Games. Hello. Hello. This week, the Hustlers are up against former member of So Solid crew, solo artist in her own right, and winner of Celeb Air, Lisa Mafia. Oh. <laughs> have you ever been scammed before? Obviously, you know the nature I of the I probably show. have, and uh, you don't know. So, <laughs> didn't even know it. Still don't know now. Interesting. <laughs> Well, obviously, we've, we've brought you down here yes. for a reason. Yeah. Um, have you got £10 on you? I have. you have. Lisa doesn't know it yet, but her ten is not just the wager for the challenge, it's part of the challenge. Um, I've got a question for you. How many times do you think you can fold this £10 note in half? It's like over and then again and then again. About... about six, maybe? About six times. Do yeah. you want to have a go? OK. Six. So what, just over and over and over, and over, and okay. over. So that's one, isn't it? Anymore. Yeah. One, one two, 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 three, four, four, five. five. Okay. You managed to I'm going to get me six. I have Yay. to get it. That's pretty really good. Do you think you could do seven? Yeah, you have to oh, That's six folds. She was spot on. That's a good guess. It was a good guess. But quite a small piece of paper at £10. Yeah. Because the seventh wasn't so much of a fault. That was, it? Really it was no, a dent. It was like a dent. <laughs> so, with this um, A4 piece of paper, I mean, that's about, what, seven, eight times bigger? How many times do you think you'd be able to fold this? Just like you have done with this tampon note, bear in mind the size. Uh, maybe 30? 30 times you think you in could fold it in, in, in half. half. In, in half, half. OK. okay. Well, so. What about if we did something a little bit bigger? What about this newspaper? Wow. As in half, half, just like you did with the tampon at note. Least, at, at least 60, maybe? You can 60 fold, times You can half. fold this paper yeah. 60 times, half and half and half. Yeah, probably about, maybe about... And it's thinner too, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Jess is about to offer Lisa an amazing-sounding bet. Well, how about for every fold you do after eight folds, I'll give you a ten pound now. So for after if you do eight. nine if you do nine folds, I'll give you a ten. If you do ten folds, I'll give you another ten. Oh so God. on and so forth. Like Twenty quid if you do ten, thirty if you do eleven, forty, and so on and so forth. What's the catch? Because I know I can do that. Then well, go for I'll it. tell you what, if you can, if you we can. get to keep the ten. Yeah. So Lisa's confident that she can fold the newspaper in half sixty times. If she does, it'll be a good five minutes work she'd make a whopping £520 from the Hustlers. Do you want to start going? Completely okay. false, like you yeah. did with this. So That's one. one. She's off. One. We'll, we'll be counting and make I'm sure... Gonna go. that way. I'm going to go that way, yeah. OK. Two. Two. I know that's making it small already. <gasps> Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. Five. Six. Six. Seven. Seven. Eight. Eight. Oh, my gosh. I'm so... Can I start again? Lisa's just discovered the catch. Five. Six. Oh my god. Seven. Seven. That's eight. Oh, can you manage eight just about? Eight. Wait. Everything after eight, you get a turn off for. Sixty folds is looking unlikely. Is that really a fold though? Eight. That's not really still number eight. I'll give you the eight. But just about. Can you do nine? No. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> she folds. And how many yeah. did you think you could do? Was it sixty? Sixty. 60. 60. After eight folds, paper is an incredible 256 times thicker. Even the best paper folders in the world can't go higher than nine folds in half with their bare hands. 
no matter how big the paper. If Lisa had managed to fold it 60 times, it would be pretty thick. In fact, more than a billion billion times thicker than one sheet, which is thick enough to reach from here to the sun and back 38 times. So that's another celebrity tenor for the hustlers, though this one is slightly more creased than usual. You know why you can't fold that anymore? No, it's so solid. That was a good one. That was good. That's <laughs> Still to come, Paul takes these parkers for a ride. Joking with me. And Alex goes out with a bang. Oh! <laughs> If you're planning a holiday this year and don't want to run into any hustlers, here's some essential advice to get you on your way. Most people's holidays turn out to be exactly what they'd hoped for, relaxing and enjoyable. But sometimes things do go horribly wrong. And the thing to do here is to be prepared. Before you go on holiday, make sure you've got a comprehensive travel insurance. And what we mean by comprehensive is an insurance that covers you both for things that are stolen or that you've lost, and also for any emergency medical treatment. Now, if something does happen to you abroad, do contact the police. No matter how trivial you think the crime was, do contact the police. They will be able to advise you, and also they'll be able to issue you with a police incident number, which will help you in any claims you wish to make when you get back home. Millions of tourists visit the historic city of Oxford every year. And with so many sightseers, parking is at a premium. Most visitors are willing to pay for the privilege, and Paul has come to this city centre car park to help them do exactly that. Really pay for the privilege. This is the Super Pass. Paul's come prepared for his afternoon out. With his badge, fluorescent jacket and clipboard, he looks like he was born to work in a car park. Now he just needs some motorists to arrive so he can help them spend their money. Afternoon. Can I ask how long you're going to be, roughly? Um, one to two hours. It's up to you, but uh, we have a one-day pass for five pounds now, which is a new program we've started. It means if you're a little bit late, you won't get charged six or seven pounds. Uh, you're not as well then. Mm. Yeah. Can I have your uh, ticket there. Stamp it. So here's the deal. Instead of paying by the hour before they exit, motorists can buy a five-pound super pass from Paul, which allows them to park here all day long. It's five pounds. To most visitors, that sounds like a bargain. All right, take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Can I ask how long you're staying for, folks? Uh, five hours. Do you know about the Super Pass program? If you pay by the hours, about three, four pounds an hour, five pounds is Super Pass for the day if you want it. It's up to you. Yeah, just, uh, there you go, thank you. And do you have your uh, ticket, please? Another quick stamp on the ticket. There you go, and when you go out, just use this. And another quick fiver into Paul's pocket. Okay, great, take care, bye-bye. Hi there, we have a super pass program now, five pounders for the whole day right. on the way out. I mean, when I get yeah. to the gate, though, what um, Yeah, it'll scan straight through, All right, okay. scan straight through. Of course, there is no such thing as a super pass. Paul's just knocked up a cheap stamp that prints the word on the parking ticket, and it certainly won't open the exit gate. Five pounds, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Paul doesn't want to work the car park for too long, because once his customers start returning, he'll have a lot of explaining to do. Morning. So he's going to use his final mark to help him make his getaway. Uh, it's five pounds. Great. Paul doesn't actually stamp this marks pass. He keeps it and hands back his very own parking ticket instead. Of course, it now has the magic word super pass stamped on it. Once the motorist has walked out of sight, Paul puts the ticket to good use in the payment machine. It only costs him one pound. After all, the marks only just arrived at the car park. That's a pretty lucrative 30 minutes and one very satisfied hustler off to another Oxford car park 
to relieve some more tourists of their spending money. Later that day, some of the motorists return to their cars. And with their Superpass ticket, they don't go anywhere near the payment machine. But they're about to find out that their Superpass isn't so super after all. This is obviously a job for a man. The barrier won't open because the parking hasn't been paid for. And everyone that tries to leave without paying at the machine has the same problem. It's not long before the traffic chaos at the barrier attracts the attention of a real parking supervisor. Hello, can I help at all? Yeah, um, got the super pass. Super pass? It's not a promotion, I mean, it's not a normal entry ticket, I mean... Of course, he's never heard of a super pass. So he was wearing one of a bright yellow thing. We've got no promotions at all, so I'm afraid... But unfortunately, I paid £5 and he was like... Not according to the ticket. Unfortunately, you need to go along to the pay machine, which is just over there, and pay for your parking. So that means a guy took £5 off me? It sounds that way, I'm afraid, yeah. Certainly, it's not a promotion we're doing here. We asked the Marks how they were enjoying their day out. A bit cross about it. Yeah. Um, considering, obviously, giving him £5, now we have to pay and nice. probably another £6, yeah. Um, so all in all, we spent £11 just to park a car for two hours. It was a guy in a high-vis jacket, so I just assumed that he was a car park attendant. So it was like £4 an yeah, hour, so yeah. we thought we'd make the most of it. Yeah. As we know, if a deal is too good to be true, it probably is. And just because someone's wearing a high-vis jacket, that doesn't make the deal any more legitimate. If you're suspicious about anything like that, then check with the proper parking authorities. When on holiday, it doesn't get much better than relaxing in the sun with a drink in your hand. Except if that drink is free. The hostlers are going to show you how to win drinks from your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hostlers always have the edge. And you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. I will have a gin and tonic, please. Alex is out in a seaside bar and he fancies a free drink. Balloons! Yay! What is a grown man doing with balloons? I'm pleased to hear that. To be I don't honest. know. <laughs> Which one would you like? I'd like the red one, please. The red one. Yes. Okay. It's got to be blue for boys. Blue for boys. Leaves me with pink. Thank you. <laughs> so blow them up. Not too big. And tie a. Good. Tie it up. Great. Brilliant, excellent. You got it. All right, here's my question. How long do you think you could hold that balloon over that flame before it bursts? You can't hold it up here. Okay. You've got to hold it like, wah. Touch just wait, just touch almost, almost touching, yeah. How long do you reckon it will last? Not very long. Not very long. Second? Two seconds? A couple of seconds. Yeah, couple A couple of seconds. Of seconds. Yeah. All right, you can go first. Put it on the flame. A little bit. Touch, touch it. Touch it. OK, that's that just about burst as it tops the flame again. Yes. Who wants to go next? Who thinks they can better that? Okay. So you're trying to beat about a second. Oh, so you're trying to warm the balloon up, <laughs> get it used to the idea that it's going to be very hot any second now. That's pretty good. You've got the wind helping you out. Whoa! OK. I would say that was about 10 seconds. All right. Oh, like that, it's but it's got, it, hand, it? it's got to be close to the flame, right? Oh, it certainly lasts that long, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, so Very I'm going to use one of these balloons and I am going to hold it over for at least 30 seconds. How long? I'm, uh, you could choose which balloon I do. At least 30 seconds. On the flame? On the flame. A la pancha. <laughs> <laughs> if I could do it, could you guys buy me a drink? Can I have a shake on that? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. No chance you're going to do it. Which one do you want me to use? Pink. The pink. Girl's choice. 
Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Your timing. <laughs> we, am I touching the flame? Because I can't actually see it. Yeah. 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 You've been sitting there for about half hour. I just... <laughs> I should have timed that, shouldn't I? <laughs> oh! <laughs> the trick here is that Alex started by taking a mouthful of water. The water then went into the balloon before he blew it up. Instead of quickly heating the balloon to breaking point, all the heat from the flame went straight into the water, keeping the balloon nice and cool and intact. And that's how Alex achieved his record-breaking time. That was 30 seconds. I didn't think that. <laughs> that was very good. That was very, very good. good. More and more holidaymakers are choosing to spend their time off in Britain, rather than going abroad, staying in hotels, B&Bs and cottages. Jess has come to an area full of holiday rental properties. She's going to make some tourists hand over their hard-earned spending money. And she's going to do it by giving them a present. This is the gift basket con. Jess knows that today is the main changeover day for rentals in this area. And she's looking for some new arrivals. Management company. Just wanted to check that you're okay and you got the key and everything. If you have, oh, good. Bingo. Got you some little goodies as well. These tourists weren't expecting anyone from the rental agency, but who doesn't like a free gift? Did you get the key? Oh yeah, I found it. Yeah. Oh excellent. Oh good. I was a little bit worried, so I thought I'd just pop round. Um, I need to just quickly change the remote control as well. That's okay in the living room. All right. Um, just having your system put in, and all the old remotes are still there, so you wouldn't really be getting very far with them. All right. You haven't checked yet. Have you not? All right. Do you like it though? Is everything? Oh, it's lovely. Isn't yeah, it's really big. Just got it. Just got it. Jess walks off ahead giving her a crucial few moments alone in the sitting room. Can I just show you with this fire as well? I mean, it's not really a big deal. When you start it up, you might smell a little bit of paint as well, but... So far, all Jess has done is hand out gifts and helpful advice. How is she going to turn this home visit into a profitable hustle? Here comes the killer question. Um, also, do they talk to you about um, the deposit that you need to be leaving? All right, over the phone? Um... No. You know, it's, it's, a, um, it's a £200 deposit just for any damages and stuff like that. It's just standard. That's all. Yeah. Sorry, do you want to sit down? All oh, right. Yeah. Right, you're out of a seat. Um, yeah. No, it's just standard procedure, so I need to get that off you today. Then I'll come back in a couple of days and I'll be able to give that back to you. Oh, it's right. just to make sure that, you know, there's no vases or anything that, that break. And we had, a, we had a chap here not so long ago, kept bashing his head on the ceiling. So oh, I was like, yeah, just, yeah, just, I, just start. I just like, did you? <laughs> the breakage deposit comes as a bit of a surprise to the marks. After all, the rent has already been paid in advance. Did they not tell you about that? No. No. All oh, right, because I assumed that because um, they hadn't done it, then you were paying in cash. That's why I brought my little receipt book with me. All right. That's all. Will the marks really hand over two hundred pounds to a stranger that's just knocked on their front door? They don't really have much choice. <laughs> Are all these beans are easy? They are, yeah. It's lovely, isn't it? As one mark goes off to find her purse, Jess shares some more of her intimate knowledge of the cottage with the other mark. How much have you? I've got 200. It's 200, that's spot on. It's 200, that's great. Me and Rose and Sister Dory. Oh. <laughs> oh no, we're taking all your money. No, I can get some. Look, is, there... is that okay? Yeah. That's one holiday off to an expensive start. 
And that's your receipt. I'll come back and oh, I'll, um, okay. I'll drop this back off to you in a couple of days. Yeah. Um, if you need anything, in the basket, there's my personal number. Uh, yeah. There's the management as well. Thank Have a much. lovely stay. If you oh, need right, anything, just give us a call. I'm only 10 minutes away. All right. OK, okay. take care. OK, bye. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> Enjoy your stay. Bye. Bye. It's that simple. Jess has made £200 in just five minutes. But the Marks do still have that luxury gift basket to enjoy. So how did Jess know all the intimate details of the cottage? Hello. Hi, I'm Susie. I'm from the management company. She didn't. She just walked around like she'd been there a hundred times before. Um, yeah, did you get the key? I'm oh, yeah, I found it, yeah. Oh, excellent. Oh, good. I need to just quickly change the remote control as well. And though it sounded like she knew what she was talking about... Can I just show you with the spire as well? Everything she said would have been true for any cottage in this area. We had a, we had a chap here, not so good, kept bashing his head on the ceiling. So oh. I was like, yeah, but it was all accurate enough... Are all these beans original? They are, yeah. ..that the Marks never questioned her credentials. But have a lovely stay. If you need anything, just give us a call. And what about the luxury gift basket? Unfortunately for the Marks, it's full of the kind of luxury you get from free brochures and a trip to the local pound shop. It's worth all of £9. We told the Marks that they'd just been the victims of a con trick. Look at this. It's 200 quid. We'd only been here two minutes and, and you're caught off guard, aren't you? Next time it's going to be a professional ID, a phone number, and I'm going to phone that number up and check it before they leave or I give a deposit. It's the only way. When people leave the city and they go abroad, they go to the country, they tend to let their guard down a little bit. Now, Jess shows up and she looks the part and she uses one very good psychological trick. She gives them a gift. Now, a gift, no matter how inexpensive it is, makes the other person feel indebted to you. Um, they're liable to give you stuff in return. In this case, money. You can start your security for your holiday well before you travel. Make sure that you understand what you're being asked to pay, if there are going to be any additional charges. Then when you turn up and you're in that kind of very relaxed holiday mood and maybe your guard's down a bit, if somebody does come to you and ask you for more money, whether it's a deposit for food or, or anything at all, just make sure you think, well, that's a surprise. I'll ring the person I booked from. I'll ring the holiday company. I will double check. So remember, even when you're away from home, you should always keep your wits about you. All right, bye-bye. Okay. That way, you will avoid getting hustled on holiday. Oh, no, we're taking all your money.